2025 budgets, House of Representatives demand timely submission of medium-term expenditure framework, MTEF. President Tinubu will continue economic reforms, says Vice President, at the close of next 30 event. Central Bank of Nigeria, Security and Exchange Commission, sanctions 10 banks for forex violations. Federal government unveils 10 billion naira plan to boost CNG usage through consumer credit. Oil prices up after surprise drop in U.S. crude stockpiles. Plus, Asia markets rally with eyes on China housing briefing. The program is Business Express, reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. Good to have you here, and it's that time we talk business. Start by telling you that the three-day conversation around collaborative action for growth, competitiveness, and stability at the 30th edition of the Nigerian Economic Summit has come to a close. Maria Adozakari reports that Vice President Kashim Shatima, represented, promised better collaboration in the quest to achieve an inclusive growth and development through pragmatic policies and actions. The convergence of regional and global leaders from government, business, civil society, the social sector and academia is aimed at addressing socio-economic challenges, improving economic competitiveness and identifying policies for inclusive growth and development. Having identified gaps that need bridging, key actors now agree on ways to forward the economy. I note with satisfaction that participation in the annual summit attract experts from diverse backgrounds and help deepen and broaden citizens' collaboration and ownership in formulating government policies. The World Bank's Vice President and Chief Economist, Indemet Gill, urged the Nigerian government to remain committed to its ongoing economic reforms despite the immediate hardship they have imposed on citizens. Participants believe the 30th Nigerian Economic Summit has set the stage for continued dialogue and action towards a more prosperous and sustainable future for Nigeria. Now the Vice President has arrived in Sweden on a two-day visit to represent Nigeria in bilateral engagement with the Scandinavian nation at the instance of President Bola Metinubu. During the visit, uh, the Vice President will engage in high-level bilateral talks with key government officials, including a meeting with Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden and the Swedish Prime Minister. Shatima will use the visit to explore opportunities to strengthen collaboration between Nigeria and Sweden in areas of ICT, innovation, education, digitalization, sustainable transport, mining and agriculture. Vice President will also meet with Nuxkin, a Stockholm-based venture capital impact investor, which recently launched Nuxkin 22, a 205 million U.S. dollar tech investment fund for Africa. While in Sweden, Shatima is also expected to articulate Nigeria's economic vision and the reforms being undertaken by the administration to create a business-friendly environment in Nigeria for investors. The Vice President is expected back in the country 
on Saturday. Now the House of Representatives is urging the executive arm of government to hasten up the submission of the 2025 appropriation bill for consideration by the National Assembly. At Wednesday's plenary, lawmakers also pointed out that time is running out for the presentation of the medium-term fiscal policy framework as stipulated in the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2007. Lawmakers during plenary were unanimous that the January to December budgetary cycle is a good policy that should be sustained. They equally expressed readiness to receive the 2025 appropriation bill. The federal government must, not later than four months before the commencement of the next financial year, cause to be prepared and laid before the National Assembly and enter for the next three financial years. The time the National Assembly requires to exercise its functions as enshrined in Section 88, Subsection 2B, is technically being taken away by the non-compliance of Section 11B of Physical Responsibility Act by the Executive. And giving a time frame to go ahead and get these budgets passed Within a month, just like what happened last year, Mr. Speaker, is going to affect our oversight function. The last budget, like we rightly noted, we were almost rushed. In fact, we were rushed into concluding that budget. And that is what we want to avoid. This motion is referred to the committees on national planning and economic development, appropriation and finance for further legislative action. A motion seeking stable prices of petrol and cooking gas was referred to a joint ad hoc committee for investigation. Does the regulation allow the price of petroleum product to be different in Lagos, in Abuja, in Jos, in Casina, in Gombe? We are calling of government not to remove the cylinder that the poor are already living under oxygen. The joint committee of the House and Senate has already mandated to take care of this situation should speedily get to work. Lawmakers called for rehabilitation of highways in parts of the country. Federal Minister of Works and FEMA to make adequate provision for the erosion control and rehabilitation at Tobinamba, Udaruko, Umukwata section of Old Sapley Agbo Road. The House with the Federal Minister of Works are relevant agencies to ensure the speedy, speedy completion of the Abuja Kaduna Kano Road. Our Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, yes, of Wike, says the nation's capital is open for business. As the administration has streamlined processes to ensure ease of doing business in the territory. Onoze Akubu reports that the minister stated this at a maiden edition of the Abuja Business and Investment Summit. Besides infrastructure security, we are also focused on fostering innovation and entrepreneurship. We have run several initiatives to empower small and medium sized enterprises, which are a backbone of our economy. The safety of our investment is our top priority. In response to the growing financial strain from high energy and transportation costs on Nigerians, the Ministry of Finance incorporated the Nigerian Consumer Credit Corporation and the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative have joined forces to launch the credit access for light and mobility fund. Lady Sampson reports that the fund tagged CAM fund is for civil servants and other income earners. CNG, which is a cheaper form of energy for transportation, significantly cheaper for transportation, because we recognize very clearly that that is one of the areas where there has been a major spike in the cost of living of our people. And we're doing everything possible to reduce that cost of living and reduce the pain and suffering they're going through as a result of the unintended consequences of Mr. President's reforms, which we are very much in support of. And we believe that those reforms are in the best interest of the country. This kind of scheme has a tendency to attract the investment that will enable these conversion kits to be manufactured domestically. But I can assure you that this particular program will not just deliver consumer credit to Nigerians, but we also encourage this 
products to be made in Nigeria and will drive job creation as well as lower energy for all Nigerians. To qualify for credit, obviously, you have to have an income that is verifiable and the easier ones are those who are current civil servants or public servants or in white collar jobs where the financial institutions can assess you for credit. And once you have that, then the question is just what is your credit being applied to? And that is where the PICNG would come in. As a chairing one, and the federal government delegation, led by the Minister of Information and National Orientation, has met with the organized labor over key issues of national interest. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, says the closed-door discussions held at the office of the SGF is a proactive initiative to continue interaction with major stakeholders towards ensuring no issue of national importance is left unattended to. This is our continuous engagement with labor for the good of the country. Uh, you know that uh, labor is an important component of this country. Um, all of them, are our brothers and, and, and sisters, uh, government is, is there for everyone, including labor. The President Joe Ajero, in company of other labor union representatives, declined comment, awaiting conclusion on issues at hand. Meanwhile, the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Abu Karatu Kubagudu, who was part of the meeting, explains ongoing efforts towards addressing the current economic situation. Quota increased by over 2%. In the uh, close to 3%, in the second quarter, it went by 3.19%. Some people will say it sounds too slow, but let me give you how big that number is. Germany which is wealthier than us, which have more resources to respond to any challenge, has declined by 0.3%. UK is struggling at minus 0.2%. Why is all this happening? Why are we not growing fast enough? Because that's what we need. We need to grow fast enough at a higher rate. That is why we are taking all the painful measures, so that we put Nigeria on a sustainable, inclusive, high rate of growth. The minister expresses optimism that the nation is on the path to economic recovery. And now to regulation, regulatory agencies responsible for overseeing the activities of deposit money banks in Nigeria have sanctioned 10 banks for violations of foreign exchange guidelines and other regulatory offenses. These agencies, including the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Securities and Exchange Commission, imposed fines totaling 1.502 billion naira as penalties within the first six months of 2024. This contravention highlights the ongoing challenges faced by financial institutions in adhering to compliance standards set by regulatory authorities. Now, stakeholders, oh, at this point, we take a break for this commercial break. Do you know about the federal government's 50 billion naira presidential conditional grant scheme? This program is being implemented by the Bank of Industry. It is a federal government palliative grant aimed at supporting businesses and key sectors of the economy across the 774 local government areas in the country. Already, the bank has reached the targeted 1,000 beneficiaries in each of the 774 local government areas across the country, with each beneficiary receiving 50,000 naira. The beneficiaries include traders, artisans, creative industry, ICT, food and associated services, transportation, and logistics. In addition to this, there is a 75 billion naira federal government MSME loan scheme and the 75 billion naira federal government manufacturing sector loan scheme, which are ongoing. This message is brought to you by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Job Creation and MSMEs. Stakeholders in Nigeria's marine and blue economy are eagerly awaiting the implementation of the National Strategic Plan document following the successful deliberations, successful deliberation and adoption of the draft 
document. Vivian Zedefe reports that the Minister of Marine and Blue Economy expressed confidence that the strategy will bolster economic growth while safeguarding the country's marine ecosystem. And the true measure of our success lies in the tangible benefits we bring to our communities and the ecosystem we are trusted to protect. Together, we can navigate the path towards a vibrant economy that only meets the needs of today, but also secures a prosperous future for generations to come. The blue economy holds immense potential to revolutionize not only our maritime sector, but our broader economy, driving job creation, enhancing food security, and promoting the sustainable use of our ocean and coastal resources. The maritime domain represents a wealth of opportunities, not only in terms of trade and transportation, but also in fisheries, tourism, energy production and environmental sustainability. As an institution, we are pleased with the outcome of these discussions. It is estimated that one in 11 people around the world go to bed hungry each night. Despite food being essential for human survival, after oxygen and water, many still struggle to access an adequate supply. In this report, Musa Babaliu takes a look at what the federal government is doing to reduce the number of hungry people in the country. The right to food for a better life and a better future is the theme for this year's World Food Day. This roadwork serves as a part of the sensitization program aimed at raising awareness about the challenges faced by individuals who lack access to an adequate food supply. Without farmers, the food security cannot be achieved. Yes. If they are celebrating world food, farmers as the key holder of food security will be in the forefront. A survey conducted by the United Nations agencies reveals that approximately 2.8 billion people worldwide suffered from food insecurity. Among them, 22 million individuals reside in the Sahel region, including Nigeria. World Food Day is about you know, sensitizing the world about people who are not really uh, who are food insecure so that people now should now know about them so that they can now take action we, we, what we need is a collective action so that everybody must not go hungry now with NWAPD we have the opportunity to amplify these efforts to harness technology and global best practices and to write a new chapter in the story of Nigeria agriculture. President Bola Ahmed Tinibu has instructed the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security to collaborate with sub regional governments to ensure that a significant majority of Nigerians do not go to bed hungry. This administration has outlined plans to cultivate 500 hectares of farmland across the country to grow maize, rice, wheat, millet, and other staple crops to boost production supply and affordability. The strategy involves collaborating with state government to stem inflation and enhance food security in the country. Local and international organizations are also initiating programs to enhance farmers' output, aiming to make food available, accessible, and affordable for Nigerians. Sokoto State Government is revamping irrigation sites in Kwari and Wurno to harness a production of onions and other cash crops to improve its internally generated revenue and nation's economy. Dalhatu Abdullah reports that Governor Ahmed Aliu gave the indication while declaring open the 6th International Conference organized by the National Association of Onion Producers, Processors and Marketers of Nigeria. Of fire child soil and vast for them are land that the state endure with. The data we got from Northman indicates that between just this April and September, just within six months, we have exported ex uh, onions worth 108 trillion naira. There is need to establish a single document for exporter within after and past for ease of doing business. 
On this note, let's take a trip to the commodities market. Now, the African Development Bank has announced a funding of $5 billion to help women and small businesses on the continent. ADB Southern African Director General Leila Mokadem says the women will also get training support. The affirmative finance for women in Africa objectives is to leverage $5 billion by 2026 to support financing women-led enterprises. She added that finance as supporting is not all about credit, but also about supporting technical assistance and building the case to grow and to have a sound business plan. Now, on a little bit sad note, the World Bank says the Naira among, is among the worst performing currencies in sub-Saharan Africa in 2024. In its regional economic outlook report, Africa's polls released recently, the World Bank said the Naira continued to lose value with a year-to-date depreciation of about 43% as of August. According to the World Bank, uh, limited uh, dollar inflows and uh, slow foreign exchange disbursements to bureaus of change operators by the Central Bank of Nigeria weakened the Naira. Now, how much is the Naira exchanging for other currencies? <music> And Asian markets rally with eyes on China housing briefing. It's over to you, Maria, for summary of the market. How is the market looking like? Much more like how is African markets looking? African markets are in a mixed trade, but we're starting with Europe. We have the markets mostly bullish this morning and European markets are slightly higher this morning as they look ahead to the next monetary policy decision from the European Central Bank. The figures show DAX going up 0.49% as well as the CAC. FTSE went down 0.075. Most Asian markets fell after China's housing ministry briefing failed to impress investors. And some the country's property stocks nosediving. The figures show Nikkei going down 0.69%. We have Shanghai Composite down by 1.09%. And we have Hansang Index down by 1.29%. We have U.S. markets U.S. markets high after the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed at a record for the second time this week. The figures show Dow Jones high by 0.79%. We have S&P 500 up by 0.47%. Nasdaq Composite advanced by 0.28%. Africa markets in a mixed trade, like it said, uh, with South Africa GSE top 40 high down by 0.28%. We have Namibia All Share Index, which went high by 0.22%. That's the summary of the global market update. I am Maria Adozakari. It's over to you now, Benny. Thank you, Maria, for that update. And this is where we end this edition of Business Express. We do value your feedback. So keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube or on other NTA's channel. Business Express returns tomorrow, Friday at 3 p.m. Do keep a date with us.